For simple projects like scarves and blankets, anyone can improvise a pattern, and it's as simple as chaining until it's as wide as you want the project to be, in some cases. Let's get this out of the way. If you're using a basic stitch like the half double crochet or the double crochet or any other stitch that doesn't have a stitch multiple, just keep chaining until it's as wide as you want the scarf or the blanket to be and add your turning chain to the end and you're good to go. But more often than not, you have to work around a stitch multiple and that honestly sounds more difficult than it really is. So in this video, I wanna help you figure out how many chains to start your impromptu project, no matter which stitch you want to try. The first thing you need to know is the stitch multiple. If you're using a stitch book or an online tutorial, you can usually find this information somewhere in the pattern notes. Let's use this stitch as an example. It has a multiple of three plus two, which means the foundation chain is made up of groups of three and you add two at the end. Now, since three is a really short repeat, it wouldn't be quite as accurate to find the width of a single repeat, but the width of five repeats would give us a little more to work with. So start by chaining five groups of three chains or 15 chains total and add two at the end. Then I'm working the first row of the pattern. And since this stitch has a couple rows in its repeat, we can't just end with finishing the first row. Sometimes subsequent rows can have a minor impact on the overall width. So follow the instructions to finish all rows just before you see this little heading here, the signal for the stitch repeat. Then measure from one end to the next, being as exact as you can. And this one measures about four inches. But remember though, that's the width of five repeats, not one. So divide by five and you get 0.8 inches per repeat. It's also worth mentioning that you should use the yarn and the hook size that you plan to use for the project. Let's say you want to make a baby blanket that's about 30 inches wide. Divide 30 by 0.8 to get 37.5. You need 37 and a half repeats or groups of three chains for a baby blanket that's about 30 inches wide, but we can't do a half repeat. I'm going to round down, multiply 37 by 3 to get 111 and add 2 to the end of that for a total of 113 chains that you'd need to start a project with this stitch and hook and yarn that's about 30 inches wide. Now one big takeaway here is that the math doesn't always work out perfectly and you may have to round up or round down like we did here. And in the case of a blanket or a scarf or a table runner or any other project that doesn't have to fit your body, that's perfectly okay to round up or round down. Just know that when you round down, it'll be just slightly smaller and when you round up, it'll be just slightly bigger. Now, if you're diving in a little deeper and you want to improvise your own sweater pattern, for instance, it's not quite as simple as all of this. You do need your measurement to divide evenly into your desired width, and so you might have to play with your hook size to get exactly what you need. I say this with a pretty big caveat. Designing clothing isn't that straightforward. There are other factors like gauge, negative or positive ease, and you'll need to take all of this into account, but that's a topic for another day. The moral of the story here is that for projects where size is important, the measurement you make needs to divide evenly into the desired width. So what if your stitch is a little more interesting than the primrose stitch, like the Catherine wheel stitch, for example? This one has a repeat of eight plus two, so I'd probably start by finding the width of, say, two repeats. And for the sake of another example, let's say I want to make a scarf that's eight inches wide. 2.25, which is the estimated width per repeat for the stitch hook yarn combo. That's how many repeats you need for that width. So this is a super basic, quick and simple way to estimate a foundation chain for a variety of stitches and projects where the finished size is more of a target than an exact requirement. It's not the only way, but it's a good place to start when you're just starting to improvise your own projects without a pattern. Wave stitch patterns like chevrons and ripples are a little different, so check out this video next to see how you'd start a ripple stitch project. Happy hooking, and I'll see you over there.